One of the big myths of ham radio is that reflected power in a transmission line is lost. What is reflected power? Unless your transmission line is the same impedance as the load, some of the power will be reflected back down the line to the source. We can calculate reflected power by measuring the maximum and minimum voltage on a mismatched line expressed as a ratio, a standing wave ratio or SWR. Many of today's SWR meters show both SWR and reflected power like this one here. Forward or power from the transmitter on the left and power reflected back on the right. The higher the SWR, the higher the reflected power. The myth that reflected power is lost came into being after the invention of coax cable after World War II and then the invention of the SWR meter in the 1950s. Before then, hams would use as transmission line ladder line, two wires separated by a spacer and parallel to each other. And most didn't know what their SWR was, and it didn't matter. Why not? Because. If you can have a perfect transmission line with no loss, all power is delivered to the load, regardless of reflected power and SWR. And ladder line is about as close as you can get to a no loss transmission line. A coax cable, which we use today, works exactly like ladder line. The same principles apply. If you could have zero loss coax, it would be like zero loss ladder line. Now for this discussion, the only real difference then between ladder line and coax is that coax has more loss and it's easier to use. But now we have SWR meters and myths about reflected power get started. Now the SWR meter is a great tool, but we have to keep things in perspective. But what are the myths about reflected power? Myth number one, reflected power turns into heat in the antenna tuner, or even worse, myth number two, it gets in the transmitter and burns up the finals. Myth number three, it turns in the heat in the transmission line. So what does happen to reflected power? Well, I'm going to quote some renowned antenna engineers, Walt Maxwell, W2DU, and a ham with a pen name of Kurt Sturba. Some people think I just make this stuff up, so I'd like to dispel that notion. Now, this first quote is from Sturba, who was an engineer and a prolific writer who relentlessly attacked ham radio myths, especially the claims of antenna manufacturers who buy advertising. That's why most magazines would not print his articles. Now, Kurt here is describing a situation where the ham is using an antenna tuner. If the SWR is 10 to 1 and the transmitter power is 100 watts, then 67 watts is reflected and 33 watts goes into the antenna. Kurt has already explained that there is negligible loss in the cable, so the RF energy is not turned into heat energy there. Some will tell you that it goes back into the transmitter and heats it up, but it doesn't. So where does it go? The 67 watts is totally reflected back at the transmitter end of the cable, adds to the transmitter power, and goes back to the antenna. The transmitter is putting out 100 watts. 167 watts is going down the cable toward the antenna. What happens at the antenna? 100 watts, the total transmitter power, goes into the antenna. 67 watts is reflected back toward the transmitter. The 10 to 1 SWR has not caused us to lose any power at all. Walt Maxwell, a brilliant engineer who wrote books and articles attacking ham radio myths and explaining in great detail what happens in a transmission line, puts it this way. Power reflected from the mismatch is re-reflected back to the antenna by the tuner. Tuning for maximum line current simply adjusts the phase of the reflected wave 
to re-reflect it down the line in phase with the forward wave, again reaching the antenna. I'm going to quote Kurt Sturba again here. Here's how you can satisfy yourself that wise old Kurt is correct and that all those who try to convince you that reflected power is lost are full of baloney. He goes on to explain how you can conduct this simple experiment with just a tuner and an SWR meter that reads forward and reflected power. All you need for this experiment is a transceiver, a antenna tuner, this is an auto tuner, and an SWR meter which is connected between the tuner and the transmission line. And you look for a place on the HF spectrum where you have the highest SWR. In my case, the highest I can find is here at the bottom of the uh, 80 meter band where I have an SWR of about three to one. Now the transmitter is set for exactly 20 watts output, 1920. And note what happens when I key the transmitter. Watch the forward power on the, on the SWR meter. It's actually about 25, 26, 27 watts. Where is the additional several watts coming from? Well, look over at the right at the reflected power scale. That's about seven watts right there. So it shows that the reflected power is being added to the forward power. Many hams have observed the same thing down through the years. Their power meters show more power leaving the antenna tuner than what's going into it. They think it's because the meter is out of calibration. What they're seeing is reflected power being added to the transmitter power. When reflected power arrives back at the tuner, it sees a very high impedance mismatch, like an open circuit. So it all has to be reflected back, and its phase is reversed like it is at the antenna. Now it's in phase with the transmitter power, so they must add together. Does that mean we now have a magic power increase? No. Kurt Sturba just explained how that additional power is reflected back when it reaches the antenna. But it does mean that full transmitter power is radiated, and that's important. What if there's no tuner? The transmitter is designed to deliver full power into 50 ohms, but at the transmitter end of a coax line, which is like an impedance transformer, it will not likely be anywhere near 50 ohms. So, similar to a tuner, we have reflection. So, reflected power isn't what can destroy your transmitter's power amp. It's been reflected. Problem is that the transmitter is now trying to work into an unacceptable impedance mismatch that causes either large current or voltage spikes. Now your transmitter probably has a circuit to power down if that's the case, but don't trust it. Use a tuner for a good impedance match. For a transmitter or a tuner, a transmission line is a one-way street. Power goes out, but that doesn't mean power goes back in. If you know anything about plumbing, you know what a backflow preventer is. It allows water to flow in only one direction. That's how it works with reflected power. It does not infiltrate your transmitter. Why isn't reflected power turned into heat in a transmission line as it bounces back and forth between the source and load? With low loss coax in the HF bands, there isn't enough loss. Only a small amount will be lost as heat before it gets radiated. Well, then why doesn't a received signal get reflected back to the antenna. It's all about phase. Unlike reflected power, the received signal makes one trip down the line 
from the antenna to the transceiver so there's no phase reversal. So, a 10 to 1 SWR, which is insignificant with ladder line, may not be okay with coax cable because coax has more loss. But on the lower bands, where coax loss is less, like 80 and 40 meters, it might be fine. You have to decide how much cable loss you are willing to tolerate and how much you're willing to spend on high-quality, low-loss coax. And keep in mind that even if you lost half your power, that is only one half of an S unit. Now, would I be okay with losing half my power in my transmission line? No, I think that would just bother me. Antenna engineers like Maxwell and Sturba are not the only people who've written about how reflected power adds to forward power, which engineers call reflection gain. This is nothing new to engineers. What about the rest of us? The ARRL Antenna Book and numerous articles in QST Magazine explain how reflected power isn't lost, but many radio operators either don't know that or they refuse to believe it. Do we not care about how things work, especially antennas and transmission lines? Like one commenter on this channel wisely stated, the antenna is 90% of your system. Imagine a guy whose hobby is working on cars. Would he not care to know how an engine works? Could he even fix an engine that he knew nothing about? Well, if you ever have antenna problems or problems with your coax line, and you will, you'll find it much easier to figure out what the problem is with a correct understanding of how things work. So, even with relatively high SWR, all transmitter power is radiated, minus cable losses, which are generally insignificant in the HF spectrum with low-loss cable. If your transmitter is putting out 100 watts, 100 watts is radiated, even with an SWR of 10 to 1, again, depending on line loss. Reflected power is not wasted. The idea that if you have 100 watts and 67 watts of reflected power, that reflected power is lost is a myth. Now that should make us happy. It means we don't have to be afraid of SWR and reflected power. We can run relatively high standing waves, even with coax, because reflected power isn't lost, it's radiated. And it also means we can have one antenna for multiple bands. Just use a tuner. So stop worrying about SWR and reflected power. Now for further reading and clarification, see my references in the description below. Consider subscribing to this myth-busting channel in 73.